So now what we want to do is uh, we want to lay out our curves on here that are to duplicate what is in the original. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate for you how to make the curve um, that we're looking for. I'm going to insert again the picture of what the front of the original cabinet looks like. But we need to get uh, a sweeping curve that crowns down in the middle and then comes up and I'm exaggerating like this. But it's not going to be that exaggerated. And the inside, I have already calculated what the inside of my upright uh, face frames called styles. They're called referred to as styles in cabinet making. I've already calculated what the inside measurement is on either side. And I need to uh, make that measurement. And uh, referring back to my paper here where I do all my figuring on. So it's going to be 29 and 7 eighths from the center. So again, we got to do our calculating. And uh, 29 and 7 eighths would be, uh, let's see, half of 29. Well, you know what? I'm going to cheat. I could probably sit here and figure it out for you. But I have one of these handy dandy calculators that does fractions. Um, excellent thing to use. Um, I had it from when I was building houses still. So, 29 and 7 eighths, 29 inches, 7 eighths, divided by 2 equals 14 and 15 sixteenths. So I want to go 14 and 15 sixteenths on either side of my center. And I'm <coughs> going to introduce you to a different kind of a measuring device. This is a folding ruler made out of wood. And uh, I'll show, insert a picture of um, tape measure and this side by side. This has a sliding scale on it on the end on one side that makes it very um, accurate, especially if you need small, repetitive uh, measurements. So we're going to do 14 and 15 sixteenths. And I'm going to lay this on here. And I can lay it right at 14 and 15 sixteenths. And I can put a mark right there on that end and then on the other end I'm going to go right to my 29 and 7 eighths and those two marks will give me my inside dimensions of my styles. Now I'll use my speed square again as I am transferring these marks in and uh, using same dimensions for both pieces. Lightly put these on because we have to sand these pencil marks off afterwards. You don't want to have to be gouging into your piece of wood just because you made your pencil marks too deep and too strong. So now we're going to set up our curves. And uh, very simple. You don't need anything fancy to do this with. Our two end ones, I'm going to work on the one for the top first. And uh, I'm going to figure out, oh, let's see. I'm going to say that I'm going to go up in one inch to the top of my first curve. And I'm just using my polyurethane can. And I'm going to run that, put that right on there. And I'm just going to mark around the edge of the can, give me a nice arc there. And I want to mark my one inch up in here. And line up my can. I do 
do a lot of eyeball work like that. Now I've got these two pieces together like this. And I can use my piece of wood as my measuring device on this one. Just get the back side of my can flush with the bottom piece. Scribe that on there. Now, I need to make an arc that will come down like this and then go back up again on both of them. Um, and to do that, I need something pretty flexible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of oak. Look at that. See that? Pretty flexible. It's just a ripping of oak that I have. I actually use these for uh, doing four micro work. And all I have to do, boy, it sure would be nice to have an extra set of hands right about now, wouldn't it? But you know what? I have this extra set of hands, and they're called clamps. That's why you can never have too many clamps. I showed you all the clamps that I had hanging on the wall here in my shop. You can never have too many clamps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp this one right here in the middle. Then I'm just going to bend this up until it hits the top of my arc from my can, like that. And I'm going to bend this up until it hits the arc of my can, like that. And take that off. Now I have my nice smooth arc, as well as my tighter arcs on the end. And uh, I'll insert a couple of photos here so that you can see it in more detail.